Should I have brushed my hair? Doesn't matter if I brush it or not. Somebody's gonna tell me it looks like crap. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> Alrighty. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go again. Hello. Happy fall, y'all. I feel a little ridiculous just having said that. I just made the most scrumptious cup of hot chocolate ever, which I probably will not take a sip of for the next 30 minutes because I'll be busy flapping my trap. That's right, it's Q&A time. Sorry for the obnoxious slurping noise. Oh, it is so good. That hot chocolate is heaven. I reached out on Instagram and asked if you had any cues. You did, lots of them. I have lots of A's for you. I'm in a little bit of a weird mood, so that's usually the perfect time for me to do one of these videos because I'm extra chatty and I keep it extra real. Uh, so without further ado, let's hop in. And um, these are in no particular order. They're just kind of in the order that I screenshotted your um, questions. Okay, numero uno. How was your week off social media and what did you do? If you didn't know, I took a whole week off of Instagram, not only for public use, like with my public account, but for personal consumption. I just felt like I had let it take over my life. It was causing a lot of anxiety and I wanted to see if I could even step away from it for a whole week and what that would be like. And it was an amazing experience and something I think I need to plan to implement, like maybe once every so often. As a content creator, it's not the best for your business to completely go offline for a whole week at any given point, but I feel like if for a human, at least for me, it felt really important to balance out. Um, I noticed that I was looking at Instagram first thing in the morning and then every spare second, basically. And it was bordering like bad habit, probably like cross the border into bad habit. So I literally did not open the app for a whole week. There was one moment at the end of the week where I accidentally opened it. I didn't mean to. And as soon as I realized my mistake, I didn't even see anything. I like clicked out of it so fast. <laughs> but um, surprisingly, I didn't miss it at all. I thought I would miss it. I didn't miss it. Um, I'm back on it and I enjoy being plugged in a little bit, but I am implementing some new parameters with it um, to kind of curb the habit a bit. Um, I also just needed a week off of posting a video to take a break, take a breather. I was just having, um, like I needed an emotional retreat. I just personally, I mean, haven't we all just been through the ringer this year especially? There's just so much at play in our personal lives, in our, you know, collective lives with everything going on. And I just, it felt like I was getting to a fever pitch of not awesomeness. So um, I unplugged uh, because, yeah, it just, it seemed, seemed really important to me to take a full week off. And I'm really glad I did. I spent a lot of time outside, a lot of time which totally rejuvenated my soul. So that was very good for me and I feel kind of refreshed mentally. It's still, I don't know, emotionally there are ups and downs. Um, been battling anxiety more, I think most of us have been. Um, but uh, yeah, it's striving to find that balance, to find things that work, right? So. That's the answer to that question, I guess. Uh, but yeah, lots of outdoor time. This is such a beautiful time of year. October is one of my favorite times of year. Um, and the weather is just, well, not today, but in general, it's been pretty nice. What is your planner system these days? I'm back in a bullet journal and I'm really, really, really enjoying it. I was in a bujo for years. Um, before jumping back into a traditional planner and now I'm back in a bujo. I didn't pick up a planner between March and the beginning of October. I just didn't, I, I was just, pandemic life, I just couldn't, I just couldn't plan anything. <laughs> but I'm happy to be back and it's working really well for me and I'll probably do an updated view of my planning system in the, like pretty soon in the new year. What things do you do that you have found helpful 
with anxiety. As I mentioned, the anxiety has been on the uptick lately, which is unfortunate. I have worked so hard um, over the years, and I am in a much better place in general with it, um, but it's just this, I mean, 2020 is trying us, isn't it? Um, so I can't um, speak for everybody, but the things that I find that work for me when I'm getting really, really in my head, um, take a bath, and watch something soothing. So for me, that's usually like a tiny home tour. I've been really into van lifers lately. Um, anything where people are like organizing small spaces or traveling in their small spaces, exploring the great outdoors have been, have been really soothing to my soul. Uh, other things I will do is play the guitar or the piano. I find that playing an instrument really calms me and recenters me. And any mind-body movement, um, which have been limited a bit lately because of various injuries, but um, one of my fallbacks is a very gentle yoga practice. If I'm really, really trying to stay off my feet completely, yin yoga is great. Um, because it's a deeply relaxing practice that's very beneficial. It targets the myofascia, your connective tissue, and it's very gentle on the body, but pushes it, and, and it really just centers me. Um, so those would be my, my go-tos. Also, making a cup of something warm and tasty, whether it's a latte or a fabulous hot chocolate or just a really yummy cup of tea. What's your favorite outfit to wear for fall? I really love vests. I got into vests last fall. I was into vests as a younger person, like in college, I feel like, and then I stopped wearing them for a little while. I'm back. I bought a couple from Vineyard Vines on clearance last fall, and I just bought a new puffer vest um, from REI that was marked down from like 50 or 60 bucks to 16 dollars that felt like a really good find um, I just they make me feel so cozy without like restricting my arms if I'm wearing like a lot of layers I get kind of weird I don't know I'm a weird weird person but I do I love a good vest so that's definitely my favorite outfit would be a vest and like comfy pants um, and some sort of soft shirt. Why and how did you decide to join the workforce? So if you're not familiar, work is a cardio dance fitness um, program. I really need to get down the how to describe that better now that I'm a certified instructor. Uh, it's something that I actually, it's a, the program I came across years ago before I was pregnant with, right before I got pregnant with Charlotte actually, I started doing work classes at my local gym and I fell in love with it and then I got pregnant and it just was too high impact for me in my pregnancy and I um, stopped going and I didn't go for like years and years and then I started going again last, late last summer, early last, I think it was like early last fall and I fell in love with it and it was um, when I was going through a really tough time personally kind of the beginning of the, my separation and it was just so empowering for me to just dance and have fun and not be in my head for a minute and a really great workout for me I tend to get very like into it so you can kind of amp it up as much as you want in terms of like cardio fitness level and how much impact you may get, and um, I just fell in love with it. It did so much for my headspace during that time, and I continued to do it, um, you know, throughout the past year. And I just find that it really there's nothing that makes me smile so much, even when I'm having like the worst day ever. Um, it's so freeing to me, and it's been such a like I said, just a powerful way to con like kind of reconnect with my my body, to be honest, in a in a very positive way. Um, after spending so so much time um, being a tough on and critical of and judgmental of my body, um, 
I am not like a super talented dancer by any, any stretch of the imagination, but I can let go and have fun. And I decided to go for the certification because eh, I kind of just wanted to see if I could push myself to that level and B, the more I like do it, the more I want to share that experience with others. And um, I don't exactly have a game plan for how and when I'm going to teach. I do hope to teach. Um, probably not in person for a while with the pandemic and all that, although it's something I am open to, but I'd love to teach online, streaming somehow, but I have to, like I said, I have to look into that more and what that would entail um, from like the business aspect, because I'm not, I'm not sure what they allow, but you can bet if and when that day comes that I get some sort of live streaming thing going, you guys will be the first to know. I would love to dance with you. And if you want to dance with me just to make fun of me, that's cool too. <laughs> like it spreads joy, you know, it spreads joy. Anyway, if you want to know more about work, I'll put a link below. You guys can check it out. It's just such a fun, such a fun program. And it's very easily accessible now online with all of the streaming classes and everything. Do you plan to keep Ross as your last name when the divorce is final? Yes. It never occurred to me once to go back to my maiden name. Ross has become my name. I've been a Ross for 15 years. My children are named. I kind of just, just want to have the last, same last name as my children. Now that's not to say that if first, I, I don't know if I'll remarry, but if I ever do, it's not to say that I wouldn't change my name in the future, but for the future that I can predict right now, um, which does not include marriage because I'm not even dating anybody <laughs> at the moment, uh, I'm going to keep Ross. It's my name. I identify in that way and I'm going to keep it. Can you share your favorite fall soup recipe? Yes. In fact, I will be sharing several of my favorite fall recipes, both savory and sweet, um, probably next week. So stay tuned. Are you happy? I had, I stopped at this question when I saw it and I was like, this is a really good question. First of all, thank you for asking. Thank you to everybody for asking any questions. I appreciate it. Even the people who left rude questions. <laughs> it's all right. I'm just not going to answer those. Um, or shall I say, ask questions in rude ways. But that was far and few between. Most of you guys left really nice questions, really thoughtful questions, and some really kind comments. So thank you for those, for sure, as well. I am happy. When I really think about it, I'm actually doing really, really well. I'm happier than I have been in a while. And I think that is an indication that um, I am in a good place, um, in both physically, I love my new home, um, in terms of my decisions regarding my marriage and all that has unfolded with that. They were all the right decisions and I am happy. I love my children. I am so blessed by my family. I am so grateful we are all healthy and well. And I have so, so many blessings and so many things to be grateful for and I am happy. But I am also struggling. And I think it took, it's taken me really until now to fully appreciate how it's possible to be like happy at my deepest core level, like to be happy, but to also be struggling emotionally at the same time. And never before in my 37 years have I so clearly and um, consistently experienced this kind of weird cross roads of emotions that happen concurrently. Happy and stressed, grateful and anxious. Like there's just, uh, even, even um, at peace and sad, you know? I mean, there's just a lot, there's just a lot. And I know I'm not the only one feeling this, especially now, um, but yeah, I am happy. I am very happy, um, but I also am struggling 
especially this fall. I don't know if it's the change of seasons or what, but I'm definitely processing some things. I think over the summer I had kind of a, an uptick of feeling really good um, and very secure. And then with the change of the seasons, I've just been um, experiencing some more swings, um, some more anxieties, some more doubts and just the some things are affecting me more like the online negativity is kind of getting me down a lot more than it usually does um so i've had to really kind of stop and step back and say whoa what's going on there and that's part of the reason i took a week off you know because i i that felt important um but yes thank you for asking this question i think this is something that's important to talk about um yes you can be happy but also still struggle emotionally. I would love if you talked about your divorce, but from a female empowerment standpoint, I will, I will elaborate on this at some point. Um, not today, but I wanted to include this because I thought it was phrased in such an important way because that is really the main piece of why divorce was the route for me. It was about um, empowering myself and considering my children and their future and being a role model for them um, in terms of empowering themselves. Um, so I will elaborate on this further. I, I will. I will. Just not today. Um, but Absolutely, I think it's not talked about enough and I would love to share more with you soon. I got lots of questions about dating. <laughs> Am I dating? When will I start dating? Am I scared to date? What am I looking for in a future partner? Um, okay, so I'll catch you up to speed. No, I'm not currently dating. Yes, I feel ready more or less to jump into that soon. Um, I'm a little bit read an extreme traditionalist and I'm still technically married at least for a little tiny bit longer. We have a court date, just takes time. Everything's settled. Um, but, um, yes, I'm still technically married. So I personally just don't feel comfortable dating officially when I'm still married. That being said, I have nothing, like I don't judge anybody for doing anything differently. Like if you're, whatever, do you do you. That's just me. Um, but I, I am interested. Um, I feel emotionally ready. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary. Let's recap my life up to this point. I'm 37 years old. I've never actually dated. I had a string of very casual relationships in my early years of high school and then I was in a very serious relationship for three years in my second half of high school with one boy, um, so from 16 to 19, and then I went immediately from that relationship into my relationship with Don at 19 years old. I'm 37, so that was 18 years ago. I never actually dated in a traditional sense, in any sense of the word. I went from one teenage boyfriend to another teenage boyfriend who turned into um, my, you know, husband um, of forever. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no freaking clue how to date. I don't know what the protocols are, how you're supposed to, like, what, I just, I know nothing. I know absolutely zero. I think it's going to be hilariously funny when I start dating because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, it's a little scary in that way, but it's also exciting. Um, I'm excited to uh, meet somebody new. I'm also the kind of person, I know myself pretty well and I've had quite a bit of time to think about this now. I don't think I'm the kind of person who likes to casually date. I think I'm a relationship person. I know you have to casually date before you get into a relationship, but I don't think I'd be very good at juggling like multiple men at once. Do you know what I mean? Like I just, I don't, 
I just don't know. So I have no idea how that's gonna go. I'm gonna have to get on apps, I guess, at some point. I don't know how to how you navigate that with the pandemic, although I guess it's just like anything else these days. You wear a mask, you social distance to the best of your ability, I guess. But um, it will be interesting, to say the least. And I will report back when it happens. I don't think it will be happening um, for a little while yet, but I am gearing up. What I'm looking for in a future partner, this is kind of something I've been thinking about a little bit more lately because I have the time and emotional space to do so. I'm looking for somebody, trust is paramount to me. Trust is extremely important. I'm looking for somebody who um, shows me that they are trustworthy. I'm looking for kindness. I am looking for somebody who is considerate, who listens well, who cares, you know? Um, I'm looking for somebody who has similar family morals to mine. Um, because I have kids, that feels very important. Um, doesn't mean that we need to be aligned on everything, but there are certain things, especially when children are involved, that I think are pretty important. Um, but I think more than anything, I'm looking for kindness and compassion and trust. At least that's what I'm thinking about right now. Do you have anything planned for the kids for Halloween? Halloween's a little odd this year, isn't it? I don't, I actually don't even know if trick-or-treating has been sanctioned in our district. I don't think it has. I think it's off limits, which is fine with me because I personally don't find trick-or-treating that fun as a parent. <laughs> but um, every year my mother-in-law throws a big hoopla um, usually the weekend around Halloween, and Halloween happens to be on a Saturday this year. So um, she's stepping it up a notch. We're all pitching in and making it really involved for the kids um, and um, kind of trick-or-treating in the house, setting up a candy bar. I'm gonna bake um, like sugar cookies for the kids to decorate with frosting and, and little, you know, edible decorations. Um, so we're really just doing a, a really fun kid-themed like afternoon together. Um, and that's how we're approaching Halloween. Luckily, um, my kids have great cousins um, that you know we have been in the COVID bubble with. So um, we have each other to um, partake in these fun holidays with when we cannot do the things we normally do. But like I said, I personally do not miss, will not miss trick or treating. Um, and luckily my kids are small enough that they don't know to miss it that much either. You know, um, if it was like a couple years, if they were like six and four instead of four and two, they might be a bit more bummed out, but they're just so excited to get dressed up and have candy. Will you be doing a gift guide this year? Yes, very, very soon. In fact, stay tuned, very soon. Are you all unpacked and settled? Your home is so lovely. Are you excited to decorate for Christmas? This is a lot of questions. Um, I am mostly unpacked and somewhat settled. Thank you. I, I love my home. I also think it is lovely. Um, I'm just not in a rush with it. Our bedrooms are all set up, more or less. Mine a little bit less, but the kids are all set. In fact, their last piece is, I still wanna get them curtains for their rooms. They have blinds, just not curtains. I guess that's the last thing and I have a mirror. I need to have it, but I need to hang it in Donnie's room. But there, I ordered bookshelves for their rooms to kind of fill out their furniture a bit and so they could have books, you know, stored at, at easily accessible to them in their rooms. They just came yesterday. So that's been exciting to fill those up. Um, but it's just gonna take a little more time, especially cause I'm not rushing um, with like, furniture and decor and stuff in the other areas of the house. We have our kitchen is set up. Um, we have a couch here in the family room now, yay, and the bedrooms, and those are the main things. Um, so yeah, we'll get there eventually. And am I excited to decorate for Christmas? Yes. And also, I'm, I don't really, I'm not sure because the house is not going to be fully furnished in time for Christmas, um, which is fine, it's just not, I feel like I don't really, I, I feel like this is kind of gonna be the in-between a year with decorating. I'm just gonna pick and choose from the things that I have, which I have plenty to pick and choose from. I'm planning to get rid of quite a bit of the 
um, Christmas decorations, to be honest. But um, we'll kind of make do with the things we have. But then next year, I'm hoping to go all out, maybe get a few new things and really, really decorate it like very um, purposefully. <laughs> I don't know what the right word is. Speaking of Christmas, so many questions about Vlogmas. Will there be Vlogmas? Am I gonna vlog? Uh, will I do vlog days? Will I do... <laughs> Here's what happens. Every fall, I start getting really excited about possibly vlogging for the holidays. And then the last few years, it's, I've just been too emotionally overwhelmed by life. But I'm excited at the concept. So we'll see. Maybe, I'm sorry if that's like a really annoying answer. I just honestly don't want, I don't want to make any promises one way or the other when I really don't know. I really don't know. Um, I will tell you that I love the idea of it. I'd love to do it again. I think it's so much fun. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's so much fun. I just need to honor where I am emotionally and I can't predict that right now, even like tomorrow, I don't know, you know? Um, so. I'll let you know. I don't know. I will definitely do a Christmas decor tour for sure. And somebody asked about December daily flip through. I plan to do that for sure. I'll do um, holiday related videos with or without vlogging. I'm not sure. Do you sleep well? You always look really rested. Thank you. That makes me feel much better about my makeup application skills because I am not well rested. My sleep has been shit <laughs> sorry for my swearing but it's been absolutely horrible over the past year i think just with anxiety i just i'm finding it very hard to go to sleep once i finally turn out the light i find i can go to sleep but it's like i can't bring myself to get in bed and turn out the lights until it's way too late and then i still wake up early i have little kids um haven't been waking up at five but I've been waking up at six still and um, not going to bed till 12 or one and in five or six hours while it's enough to get by I don't think it's enough for anybody really to be super well rested um, so yeah I'm I I'm trying to trend towards going to bed earlier it just hasn't been happening ironically even though I'm not sleeping a lot I feel fine for the most part. Although I'm sure there is some effect there. It's probably feeding the anxiety that I'm not sleeping a proper seven, eight hours. Um, so it's something that I should, um, something that I should really, really work on, I, I, I guess. But I don't know, being a mother, I mean, any of you who are moms or dads or whatever of little, little ones, you know, you, your body manages to get by on very little sleep for years. <laughs> um, and both of my kids sleep great now for the most part. Donnie really, he still wakes up occasionally, um, but not very often, kind of in the night. Um, he's two and a half now, but uh, I mean, I have much more room for sleeping. Um, I just, I don't know, I can't bring myself, I think I turn out the light and my brain, I'm like afraid of my brain. <laughs> and that's where we're gonna end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you um, had something delicious to sip on while we chatted. Um, I'd love to know how you're doing, if you care to, to share. I love connecting with you guys. And I'll see you real soon, I've got um, like I said, the fall recipes video coming, I think, more or less. And uh, holiday stuff is in the works too. And I will be um, sharing some more organization stuff as well. We're going to get into the office and unpack it and organize it together because I think that would be fun. All right, friends, thank you for watching. Take such good care of yourselves. Remember, you cannot pour from an empty cup. Take care of yourself and um, choose kindness where you can. Cheers to that. Thanks for watching, take care, bye.